हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ प्रशांत कालिदास कावले आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ के के वाग इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च नासिक सो टुडेज टॉपिक इज पीआईडी कंट्रोलर पार्ट वन सो आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस टॉपिक पार्टिसिपेंट विल एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द टाइप ऑफ कंट्रोलर एक्शन explain the terms related to the dynamic response of a system and explain the basics of proportional integral and derivative control with its advantages disadvantages so everybody know what is a closed loop system so in front of you this is closed loop system okay in closed loop system if you see this is a reference input rt it is given to the comparator comparator signal comparator gives the error signal error signal is fit to the controller controller do some action as per the algorithm store and it output is manipulated signal given to the plant plant will be perform the required uh, function and gives some output again this output is given to the feedback and that feedback is again uh, given to the comparator so reference input and feedback so it is given the error signal so what is the thing controller has input is a error signal and it has a manipulated output so every controller has input is a error signal so classification of control action so the depends on the discontinuous and continuous discontinuous on off controller in that there are three types two position controller multi position controller floating mode controller so we are interested in this area right hand side so continuous in continuous proportional integrate and derivative and combination of this composite controller proportional integrate proportional derivative proportional integrate derivative so we'll try to first see that what are the terms of transient response in a control system so in front of you it's a transient response on a y axis there is a amplitude and x axis it's a time so one represent 100% means it's a set value so we have to reach up to this value so everything start from the zero so whenever we start any mechatronic system so we start with time horizon at time equal to 0 then as soon as it start so it behave like this and after some time it will reach to the desired value so this region is known as a dynamic response and after achieve the steady state it is known as a static region okay so there are some terminology peak time setting time delay time okay steady state so everybody got that a dynamic state steady state so whenever the dynamic state end this is known as a stabilization time this is known as a stabilization time and steady state error so we uh, we try to go to the 100% but due to some errors we give some tolerance zone okay and it will fluctuate in in, in that zone okay so this is known as a steady state error okay so we'll see one by one term so first term rise time it is defined as the time it takes transient response to move from 10% to 90% of the steady state response maximum overshoot the maximum overshoot is a percentage by which a maximum value of transient response exceeds the steady state value peak value it's defined as the time at which maximum overshoot occurs delay time the delay time is the time required for the response to reach its half of the final value and setting time is defined as a time after which output is within a specified band means in tolerance zone so types of system response so we consider a step input we consider we are assuming step input so all the stable systems will behave their dynamic response will be behave like that so they have some oscillations and after some times they will there are damping and they reach the set value or this is the type of curve so this is expected from the system system should be designed according to this way but if it is not properly designed 
so there will be not stability so this is not unstable system this is unstable system this is unstable system so it will not reach to the desired value so pid controller has a three controller mode so this three controller takes the system to the desired value as soon as possible so their job is to take the system to the desired value so proportional control integral control deri derivative control so it is assumed that this term mathematics terms you know so each of this three mode reacts differently due to the error it is a control loop feedback mechanism which are varied to the get optimal response so if it is a proportional controller so this is input input is error input is a error so which kind of error step input so if you see output is proportional to the error it is somewhat greater or equal to same okay so what is a proportional proportional to error directly proportionality so what is the integral integral over the period of time it accumulates the past value so this is the integral output to the error value and what is a derivative a derivative is nothing but rate of change of error so now we will see that as soon as there is step response and it becomes a constant so derivative output only for this region after that there is no response why because the error is constant there is no change so what is a p control so in front of you it is a closed loop system unity feedback so this is the controller which controller proportional control it has the error input and it has the manipulated output us so proportional controller produces an output which is proportional to the error signal so ut is a output time based directly proportional to the error so constant of proportionality is known as a kp so we convert this time domain into laplace domain so laplace formula we are applying so we get a transfer function for the controller so what is the transfer function kp output of a controller us and input error signal so therefore transfer function of a proportional controller is kp so this is the error signal step input and your proportional controller will be behave like that if you are increasing the kp value proportionality constant then the output will be increases okay so output of a proportional controller is kp times the error signal kp it's a gain the adjustable setting of the proportional controller is called as a controller gain so whenever you are using a proportional controller system will be behave like this and there is a always a offset okay there is always a offset so when we are increasing the kp value low or we are decreasing the kp value or increasing the if kp value is low then the rise time reduces and and if you increases the high gain then it will respond fast but increase the overshoot increase the overshoot so if the controller gain is set to high the control loop will begin to oscillate so if you see oscillation compared to the low gain there is a less oscillation but response will be le response will be less here response will be faster but oscillations so drawback too high value of kp will leads to oscillation p controller tends to generate offset value p controller also increases the maximum overshoot so <coughs> we fed some bias and then we'll try to reduce the overshoot so we'll go for the i control so i control is integration of the error for particular time bind so converting into the laplace former so this is the transfer function us upon es is equal to ki upon s so what is the transfer function of integral controller ki upon s ki is a integral constant 
so how it behave with the error so it behave with the error like this so what is this this is the increasing so line will be increases line will be decrease slope of the line will be increases it depends upon the ki value okay so it system deviates suddenly increases manipulated variable increases continuously integral ac action eliminates offset for example proportional introduce offset integral eliminate the offset if the error is large the integral mode will be increment decrement controllers output fast if the error is small the changes will be slower sluggish so d controller d control is known as derivative controller so derivative rate of change of error with respect to time we are converting into the uh, laplace domain so ut is kd rate of change of derivative uh, error with respect to the time so kds it's a transfer function for derivative controller so this is the if the error is like this error curve then your derivative controller will be behave like this whenever there is no change in error that time its action becomes it give no action it only give the action when there is a rate of change of error advantages it can overcome the overshoot and severs the cycling it has a rapid response it respond to the changes of the speed and direction of the deviation it does not affect the steady state error directly but anticipate the error it increases the stability of a system by initiating an early corrective action disadvantage derivative control never use alone since it cannot give any output for zero or constant error if system is producing constant error that time there is no action from this controller so it never uses alone it is ineffective for slowly changes error and hence causes a drift it amplifies the noise signal and causes saturation effect on the system it does not eliminate the steady state offset offset will be only eliminated from i integral so entire summary on the dynamic response kp ki kd rise time decreases decreases minor changes overshoot increases increases decreases setting time small changes increases decreases steady state error decreases eliminate no effect on the vary stability degrade degrade improve if kd so this is the entire summary of a pid control independent what is the effect on the rise time overshoot setting time steady state stability so in a nutshell p proportional it only looks for the present error i integral it looks for the past history it accumulate the value the area under the curve differential it is the prediction of a future error based on the current changes so everybody got the idea p present i past d future so if you like this video like it also please subscribe my youtube channel by pressing the bell icon and never miss the upset update thank you